17 I believe I could do anything Rope the burning sun I'd run the midnight train There were no bars on the wall And I had no cares at all In my world I was a king Time went on and I grew colder Like the summer's turn to fall Had the wind at my shoulder Now my back's against the wall At 25 my foolish pride Put me on the wrong side a kiss from a girl a good man lost his life I could hear my mama wail as they put me in that cell for the rest of my life at 25 time went on and I grew colder like the summers turned to fall had the wind at my shoulder Now my back's against the wall At 63, this is me I'm looking at my history Wishing I could change Old man I used to be Looking now, I can't believe just what's become of me How I long for 17 Oh, looking now, I can't believe Just what's become of me How I long for 17 How I long for 17 Hi folks, out there in Acoustic Guitar Magazine land, my name is Brandon Lee Adams, and I am uh, live from the house in the uh, age of COVID, and uh, hoping that I can run through one of my songs here and uh, break it down for uh, the folks of you out there who would like to learn some of the skills that I'm using here in this uh, particular song. The name of that tune was I Long for 17, I recorded that on my uh, first album hardest kind of memories and uh, lucky enough to work with mr. Tony Rice on that track uh, I picked this one because I feel like it's a uh, related to the times right now as far as musicians we can't really get a bunch of people together we can't really do a whole lot of socializing and uh, for that guy who goes out or that lady who goes out and uh, plays solo on the weekends or the weeknights and trying to make it um, you know, where there's no accompaniment. I felt like this was a good song to try to do for that situation because it leads to, I'm using a lot of tricks um, to help the guitar back up my vocal. And I think I'll break this down. I'll try to break this down, this thought process that I have when I'm going in doing a song like this. Um, the first thing to really get straight is uh, we are playing from a C position but the capo is on the second fret, so we're a whole step up because we moved two steps, uh, two half steps on the guitar neck. So we are in a D major key, but I'm gonna speak like we're working from a C position on this particular tune. So uh, just keep in mind, capo, second fret, D major key, but we're working from a C position, so I'll speak like I'm moving in a C position. All right. The first thing on this song, or the first thing that I'd like to kind of break down and help you with, uh, if at all possible, is kind of my thought process doing a solo for something like this. I've always felt the more strings that you can make sound uh, when, you're doing, when you're going solo, 
the more full it sounds. You know, we're not trying to do individual notes. You know, I think uh, they, those have a time and a place, but when you're playing by yourself, if you can get more notes sounding, it sounds more full when you don't have accompaniment or you're in a kind of a duet setting. So with that in mind, um, I want to break down a few of the things that are in this intro solo. Uh, moving from a C position, I'm doing a little cross pick. And uh, for those of you out there who don't know what a cross pick is, um, there are several little uh, right hand patterns. A lot of people will do a down, down, up. And some people will do like, you know, this up, up, down. So what I'm moving within uh, the C major chord, all I'm doing is a little hammer on here. And what I'm trying to do with that from my C major position or my C position into trying to get that next chord sequence or that next chord that's in the sequence of the song I should say. So that would be a G. And what I'm doing there is I'm just trying to pick up that note, that G note, that next G position. So really I'm thinking about this G position uh, or this G chord in an F position. So I'm trying to pick up that note using uh, a full chord in mind. So if I need to, I can play more than one note. So I can make it sound even more full using that. And I'm just using just really a portion of the chord shape. So I'm just kind of using what I need. You know, if the pick slips or you just want to add a more full tone. And you could even just play the full chord position. Okay. Uh, it's just a dealer's choice on that kind of thing has always been my thinking. So we've moved from our C to our G. Now the next chord in, C is in the sequence would be an F. I'm just doing a little walk. And see, we have, I'm leaving this note open here. We get a nice suspended feel. So I'm just working that back down. So. And then we're going to walk, just a little cross pick kind of walk from our C position back into our F. Now the next chords we have in progression are going to be from the F to the G to an A minor. Now when I'm doing things like that, walks, walks, just little walks, little skips. So I'm just really just walking down that chord shape. Now I'm going to pick up my G position right here. moving to the A minor. It would be an A minor like that. Um, so we've got another F here in a D shape to our G position again. So I'm really just using kind of the caged method. So we're just really just using these chord shapes to get us into the key that we want to be in. And we'll use little things like bridges. I'll, I'll break down the bridge uh, to these things. Uh, uh, the bridge from the F to the G would be. So that little walk. Or a walk similar to that. So that's a little bridge. Just getting us to our next chord. 
So there's our F. Into our G. And then here would be another little link. Now what I'm doing in that sequence, once again, I just go back to my theory of I like to have more than one string sounding in this kind of solo setting. Um, I think it just it's more entertaining, to, at least to my ear, to do things like that. I'll slow that down a little bit more. And if you notice, uh, a couple of things to point out about doing that. I'm using all down strokes. Now you could do any sequence of stroke that you like. You, know, you could do all up strokes. What? For me, what sounds good to my ear is using down strokes on a sequence like this. Now I'm moving back into my F. Instead of playing in F shape like this or an F shape like this with a suspended note, I'm going to be moving into what would be called a bar chord F. I'm just doing um, an arpeggio or a sweep, or not really a sweep pick, but really all I'm doing to, to make it in really layman's terms is I'm just taking that bar chord. And there's my suspended. Breaking down that sequence a little bit better, I'll try to break that sequence down a little bit better from my bar chord F out. And you see my C. Okay. Let me try to slow that down one more time. This nice suspended F. All right, so let me try to put some of those things together for you in sequence. We'll pick it up from the G in. So those are some things that are some of the f ideas I have when I'm trying to move uh, as a, just a solo guitar player by myself. I'm trying to use more than one string. I'm trying to think about the chord sequence uh, that's going in that song with the melody. So, you know, So when you're, when you're conducting intros or solos, um, you keep try to think a chord ahead or maybe think two chords ahead. So that will help you or that helps me when I'm trying to, to come up with a way to play a song that makes sense that the, whoever's listening to it can say, okay, I can kind of hear the melody in there, or at least that makes musical sense because you're moving in the same pattern as the song is moving. So the, that's, in the nutshell, what I do. Uh, another thing that I'd like to break down about a song like this is uh, your rhythm stroke, you know? Now, what I'll do, and it's more of a kind of a bluegrassy rhythm, is uh, I like to use my alternating bass notes. And kind of keep a feel of that alternating bass note going. 
so if I'm playing in a C position, I've got my two real good bass notes right here. So hit that, you know, higher bass note. Okay, now I'll use different things in that, or, or different tricks within these rhythms, so it doesn't get monotonous or boring. And uh, let me play through this without singing uh, through a couple of parts and kind of give you some ideas, and I'll try to stop when something different comes up and uh, maybe go into a little bit of detail as best I can uh, on what I'm doing to try to break up the monotony of just alternate bass note. So we'll start really, really from the da 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 da. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right, right there, da 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 da. Alternate, alternate. So all I'm doing really is I'm just coming down when I'm coming to that F. Da 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 da. da, da. So I'm coming in here, and I'm doing nice, a nice little cross pick or a nice little uh, um, just leading the voice. All down strokes: one, one, two, three, four; one, two, three, four. Now, and you can stop and get your alternate bass pattern right back um, with a good downstroke. So we're going. Okay, now what I'm doing there would be considered a walk. And let me try to put this back in context, maybe back it up a little bit and put it a little bit more in context. Da, 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 da. Alternate. Now here we go. Back to alternate. Now, what I'm doing there will be called, uh, at least in my world, uh, where I came up, we're calling that walking into the next chord. And that's just a walking a bass note into our next chord, but it breaks up the monotony of that alternating bass note pattern. So what I'm doing is I'm really just taking these bass notes along the shape of the next chord I'm playing in. With a nice little hammer on there to try to add a little flavor to it. Okay, so now let me get into that and try to bring it back into context for you. Da 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 to the sequence what I'm doing okay so now I know I've got an A minor coming up so I'm walking from my C position to a G major position and really what I'm doing there is I'm just trying to find accent notes these are the that's not a G major chord, but you're trying to find just a little accent note. It's not something that's staying there forever, but it's enough to add some flavor. And I'm all about trying to add a little flavor to your rhythm. So let me take that back in context. At 17. Just a little cross pick. And then I walk back into the sea. There were no bars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 
Let me play all of that in context together and um, see if we can make some sense of all of this blabber on the side. At 17, Now that's what the chorus is, the, not, not a super complicated song, or the verses, I'm sorry, not the choruses. Those are the verses, every verse is really the same rhythm pattern. Now going into the chorus. <laughs> time went on and I grew colder. So we're going to this E minor position. So our chorus is gonna start there. A Couple of different things I like to do um, and it's, it's really spontaneous. I don't know I'm doing it until I've done it, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I really like to, to a chorus to stand out. We know this is the chorus. And there's a few ways to do it. And um, we went into this E minor position, which is not the relative minor to a C position. So that's a good clash, uh, but it still fits. As long as you can put your voice there, it fits. So some things I like to do when I'm coming into that is just do a good upstroke. You just do a nice upstroke and then back into your alternating pattern. You notice I'm always trying to look for bass runs. You know, look for nice little bass runs to take you to the next chord. Time went on and I grew colder. There's that walk again. Okay, now let me play that chorus again through at a, at a moderate spade and let uh, try to break down some of the things I'm doing uh, when I'm doing that. So, mm -hmm. time went on and I grew colder. A couple of things to kind of point out there to you would be moving into my E minor position. Nice little upstroke to break up the monotony. I'm always, once again, you know, the, the repeating phrase, break up the monotony, make it more interesting. So now we're moving into a two chord, um, or, or some people call it an off chord. My grandpa was really fond of calling them off chords. Um, but we're moving into a uh, two flatted seventh chord, if that makes any sense, or a D seventh position. But I, I voice my D sevens a, a lot of times when I'm playing in a C position a little different because I'm always thinking bass notes when you're playing as a solo guitar player or a solo instrumentist, an instrumentalist, you're thinking about, you know, have that bass note always rocking because it, it's almost like you, it sounds like you're playing two instruments if you can keep that busy. So, I mean, you guys probably know, you know this is a, a D flatted seventh or a D seventh position. And it works. But for me, you're leaving out that bass note. So I've always loved to have that bass note in there. So all I'm doing is. And we've got a nice little suspend right there. Right. Okay. 
So let me run through that course one more time and uh, try to point out you know, a couple of things I'm doing. Again, let's do it in context and play it at a moderate speed so you can kind of follow me with that. So. Now let me do that with a vocal, and maybe that'll kind of help you uh, even further kind of put what I'm doing into context. Time went on and I grew colder Like the summer's turn to fall I had the wind at my shoulder Now my back's against the wall And uh, glad I did that because uh, now I'm forgetting to mention another important element, which is um, time went on and I grew colder, like the summer's turn to fall. So doing something like that, doing a little fill the gap kind of thing. And what I mean by filling the gap is you've got space when you're moving your measures. You know, maybe this is, you know, maybe we're doing a 4-4 four, four time or a 2-4 time or a 3-4 or 6-8 or whatever. You want to complete your measure before you move to the next key. And sometimes the lyric doesn't go as long as the measure. And anytime I run into a situation like that, um, it's just instinct now at this point. I'll try to do a little bass run or a little bass walk or something to fill that gap where the vocal didn't take up the full measure. So in the case of this course, the time went on and I grew colder like the summer's turn to fall. So really all I'm doing is I'm moving back into my F shape just to take up that extra space that the vocal cut out too soon on. I had the wind at my shoulder Now my back's against the wall And then we move on to the next verse. Um, I hope that this has been informative. I know this is a little unorthodox the way that I'm breaking this down. I'm not used to breaking you know, these things down very much. I really try and to, uh, to help you, or if you don't know how to do this, and if you do know how to do this, then this is old hat, and you can move on. Um, but these are some of the ideas and some of the arrangements or things that I'm thinking about um, when I'm writing a tune of this nature, something that I'd be comfortable just playing with just me and my guitar. Um, and that's some of the philosophy that I go through with that. I hope this has really been informative to you guys. Um, you know, many thanks to Kevin Owens and everybody at Acoustic Guitar Magazine for the opportunity to do this. And uh, if you get a chance, you can follow me on Facebook, Brandon Lee Adams. Check out www.brandonleeadamsmusic.com. Um, check out my song, I Long for 17, on Spotify and Instagram and uh, uh, Pandora and all those wonderful things. And I hope all of you pickers out there are having a safe time and a fun time and uh, using this as woodshedding time for when there is no more COVID, uh, thankfully, hopefully, and uh, we can move on and go back to life as normal. Uh, God bless to everybody. Thank you very much, and uh, hope to do this again sometime.